I'll try to do this without a microphone, but um, if any of you don't quite understand me, then just please raise your hands and let me know that I should speak up a little bit. So thank you very much for the kind introduction and thank you, Sandra, for a great talk. I think I can relate to a lot of what you said there. And um, thank you in the audience for coming here on a Sunday, a Saturday morning uh, at this time and listen to our talks. Um, it's a great event. And um, I would like to take you on a journey. Um, I gave um, the talk the title Idea, Invention, Innovation. And there are two reasons for that. First of all, is this actually my job description. So as you heard in, my, in the introduction, um, I'm a technology transfer professional. This means that um, I usually take uh, inventions that were made in an academic lab or maybe also in a startup or from anyone really and help translate it into an innovation. This means that I help to actually get it onto the market and uh, create some impact in various different ways. So it can be health, wealth for society, you can create new jobs, anything really. Um, the second reason I chose this title was because I would like, for the purpose of this talk, each of you to think about that you are also a platform technology. Each of you, um, you've got an amazing set of skills and you can actually go out there, apply to various different fields and become really successful, innovate and actually just contribute uh, and create impact. And so I would like to take you now on my personal journey here and uh, show you what I've been up to the last few years. So the first part of it is obviously work hard. Um, so what does that mean? Well, in my terms, it was that at some point in my life, I decided I wanted to become a scientist. So I said, I would like to become a really great virologist. I want to, I don't know, work on really nasty diseases like Ebola or HIV, save the world and become something like a Dustin Hoffman as in Outbreak, uh, which was incidentally the movie that actually got me into <laughs> microbiology. And um, I thought that the best way to achieve that was to go on first and study for a master's in microbiology genetics. Um, which I completed with a major in immunology. And I felt, well, this is perhaps not quite enough. So I uh, decided to work in a number of labs uh, while I was studying. Uh, mostly it was part-time, so it was taking quite a toll of my time. But uh, it was a great experience because what it allowed me was to see the whole drug development process from target identification over to uh, all the kind of biology that you need to do, clinical trials, go over to uh, quality control, so again, quite a lot of lab work, and um, then even uh, ended up in regulatory affairs. And I think that was a really very helpful experience. And uh, however, after having completed my master's in immunology, I then decided to work on plants, um, which is, you say, like, why? Well, <laughs> I need to say I sort of thought that um, while virology was really interesting and it was, you know, really great stuff to do, I decided I fell in love with plants because they deserve it. It's that, um, no, really, it sounds funny, but I think that, um, and it's also quite a good analogy for life, really, because um, whereas we can just, you know, if we don't like something, we can just stand up and leave. Plants have the huge challenge that are just sitting there <laughs> and they just can't move around somewhere. They can't just leave. They need to find a strategy to battle through because they have just, just the two options, die or survive. And so I thought that actually it's much more fascinating to work on these kind of guys and find out, you know, what, what are their strategies? What, what are they up to and how do they do that? So, but I didn't leave immunology completely. So I went to plant cell biology. So I produced all these lovely colorful images that you see on the far left here, down there. It's actually my favorite one. And this just shows you the 
survival of a plant cell because on the lower right you see actually part of it is dying and on the top left you can see immunology working quite well. So it's actually an infected plant cell. And um, I really loved lab work, I really loved microscopy, but I sort of figured that I still needed something else to do because I s felt I needed something creative, I needed to, to actually build something. So, uh, as you do while you're doing a doctorate, I actually set up my own jeweler business, which was uh, really great fun. And yes, it was very stressful, I can totally relate to that, um, because you suddenly find yourself, you need to be available 24-7 for any kind of inquiry. Uh, there's suddenly media that wants to interview you. There are competitions that you enter that you, know, you need to be uh, up on speed. While doing that, you need to still impress your supervisors that you're actually still doing something in the lab <laughs> <laughs> and going towards completion of your studies. Um, but again, adding on to that, I was also uh, still working at numerous companies doing market research, sales, business development, and somehow I never quite found what I really wanted. So. I was supposedly doing science, which I wanted to do for many, many years. I did something creative, but still haven't, didn't quite find the way, or didn't quite see where I, where I should be at. And so, it was just at a career event where I actually already felt a little bit like a failure because I said, like, well, okay, I wanted to become a scientist, but actually, um, changing plan, I'm not quite happy with that. And uh, I met someone there who said, like, well, you know, there's actually something from the BBSSC, which is one of the seven research councils in the UK, which actually um, uh, fund science there. They have a scheme that where you can enter with a team, uh, come up with a hypothetical business idea, and just, uh, you know, um, learn something about business, growing biotech businesses, and tech transfer, and so on. And for like, okay, I should be writing up my thesis by now, but well, okay, well, okay, I'll, 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 I'll do that. So I quickly put together a team from our department, the plant sciences in Oxford, and uh, we entered the competition, and it was great fun. I mean, not just to think about all the personal challenges that we had, and that we also just completely uh, threw away a business plan just the night before the presentation and came up with something completely new, um, we decided, uh, I mean, it was just great to be able to suddenly think in terms of business strategy, IP strategy, and come up with something, yeah, just this kind of entrepreneurial spirit. I need to say it was also a very challenging time because uh, we didn't get any training at Oxford at that time. Even though it was a huge national competition, um, our university had completely left out student and apprenticeship at that time. So I was very, very proud that after pushing hard and after really influencing quite heavily the tech transfer office there and talking to the career service that actually a training program was established just at that time with my help. So I'm really, really happy and pleased to see that this program has been running now for four years and um, that student and apprenticeship got much more attention in Oxford than it used to at that time. And also, uh, what I started at that time was actually to become a private investor on uh, companies that are listed on the London Stock Exchange. It's again something where I could apply all my kind of market research skills and my business skills, and uh, it, 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 it's a really great thing to do. Um, and I'm quite happy that I haven't run a loss yet with all of this. And. Never mind. So while I was writing up my doctoral thesis, so you can already get the theme, I was always working in parallel at many places because um, I can get quite easily bored. And so I decided to join the scientific computing department at the SDFC, which is again one of the other seven research councils apart from BBSSC. And there I was actually a security policy advisor to a big data project. So what we tried to achieve was to get together a uh, Google Maps for healthcare so that you could really zoom in on a, a small molecule and go up all the way to a model organism. 
and uh, see really every pathway through that and that incorporated all the data that we had. So I had to just quickly learn all about copyright that there was in Europe um, and try to come up with a policy that would make sense, that would enable data sharing. Keeping in mind also what you see there as well as bioethics, so data protection, all that kind of stuff, which it was is quite challenging and uh, if you think about genomic data. And sort of, that somehow really then, together with the business plan competition that I had uh, done before, um, it's really sparked my interest for this kind of intellectual property management. So um, I contributed to the IP policy of Research Councils UK and then quickly went on to become a tech transfer officer in London which was really interesting. I mean, I was working there for the medical school and I was working um, for the hospital at St. George's. I was involved in setting up companies in kind of medical technology and uh, pharmaceuticals. And it was quite interesting, but somehow uh, I still felt I needed a little bit more diversity and I wasn't quite sure if medtech was really the right thing for me. So as soon as I got an offer to go back to Oxford and actually work for what was voted last year the best technology transfer office in the world, ISIS Innovation, um, I decided to accept that offer. And it was a great experience because I had suddenly a portfolio of physics, engineering, software, medical technology, pharmaceuticals, I just had everything really there. And um, up until that point then I had worked around um, shy of 200 commercialization projects. So it was really, really great fun and hugely rewarding experience. A great environment to work in and um, just being supported by a huge entrepreneurship base in the UK. And again, while I was doing that, I also became mentor to Oxfest, which is a student-run uh, student society that is also there to empower women in STEM. It's a great uh, okay. scheme and I'm also a mentor for the biotechnology young entrepreneur scheme in the UK where I uh, speak at the competitions on regulatory affairs and clinical guidance so I haven't left the medtech uh, field completely and I'm also there as an IP strategy advisor to help the teams find the right strategy for the business plan and yes and since just October last year I actually came back to Austria, um, having spent almost a decade in the UK uh, and a really great place for entrepreneurship. But what really attracted me of coming back here was, uh, uh, first of all, just trying to help the entrepreneurship base in Austria. But uh, IST as a young interdisciplinary institute that it is, offered me the opportunity to actually build the tech transfer office here together with my boss and to drive new policies, drive new initiatives that would help not only the institute but the region overall. And so I always refer to it as a startup within a research institute which just fits my character perfectly. And I also very closely work with AnyLine which is a Vienna-based startup delivering mobile or OCR solutions um, for uh, smartphone and wearables. A stellar team and really, really lovely. So this is in a nutshell some of the work that I did and I would also like to highlight that um, even though you know it's all great stuff you should never forget to actually also play hard and not forget that what makes us actually people is also our private lives and our experiences. So here's a little bit of photographic evidence that actually I am also a well-rounded person that I have friends <laughs> that I'm not just sitting in the lab all the time and um, engage also in competitive sports and all that. So, but if you think about, you know, what I just presented to you, um, it will actually perhaps um, surprise you that 10 to 15 years ago, I very often used sentences like this. So like, I cannot do something because. Um, and I came up with the most creative ideas why I would block myself from doing something which was less than ideal. I also very often used um, the word never. I will never do something. And most notoriously, actually, when I started out studying biology, I said like, from everything in biology, the most boring thing is really plants. It's really <laughs> botany. 
and I cannot see myself ever working with plants. So I've become very careful in using never because whenever I use this word, <laughs> it's uh, exactly it happened one to three years later, always. So <laughs> you rarely hear me these days using this word. But I need to say, uh, to become successful, I think you really need to be open to challenge and challenge yourself all the time and every day in whatever you do. You really need to embrace and celebrate change. It's something that doesn't come naturally to humans. It's innate in us that we don't like change and that we battle it and that we will really, you know, quibble about it and say like, oh, you know, again, something new is happening. I mean, it's often like you will hear, hear in the workspace, well, we've always done it like that, you know? Well, yeah, that's exactly the way why you should change something about it. And don't stay on the status quo because Progress only comes with change, and only change can be the constant in your life, really, to achieve anything. And if you don't change, then the opportunities will not present yourself to you, and then you cannot take those opportunities. I mean, again, if you think about what I've just shown you about my work experience, it seems like everything was laid out so nicely, and everything was so linear. But uh, God, no, it wasn't. It was so often an up and down, and just we feel like, oh, I have actually no idea what I'm doing here. And, oh, yeah, there's an opportunity. Yeah, okay, I'll take it along. And, you know, just working crazy hours and whatnot. But it is something really just don't say I cannot. I don't say I will not do something. Just take the opportunity and go with it. There is a reason why it is happening, even if you don't see it always. And I would also like to remind everyone that success is a team effort. It is really not something that you can achieve on your own. And I am really, really happy that I have stellar family and friends and great um, business uh, partners around me who help me all the way through the way. Because it's not something, you know, that everything was always happy, shiny. No, there were really forward downs for every nice up. Um, and there were always times when I actually doubted myself, doubted what I was doing. And it's so like, well, pff, I might as well, you know, just give up to something completely else. But no, I think it's then really great if you have people to actually remind you of where you stand and who you are and where you're heading to. So surround yourself with some really, you know, supportive people and listen to them. So when it comes to um, having worked in the tech world now for a number of years, I mean, yes, there are undoubtedly some very difficult experiences there, um, also as a girl. So, I mean, yes, there have been days where, I don't know, I was at a conference, for example, and I think there were 100 participants and maybe there were two other girls from me. And we're sitting there, listening to some startups pitching their ideas. And... At the end of the talk, I stood up and said, okay, I would like to ask a question. So the moderator said like, hey, Astrid, ask a question. And it was just three words into my question when actually a guy stood up just behind me and said like, oh, that's great. But actually what really interests me, and he just started rambling on in his question. I felt like, all right, good. I let him finish his sentence and I said, thank you, great. And I carried on uh, answer, uh, asking my question. I was actually pretty pleased that the guy in front presenting actually took my question and ignored him. And I think this is really, you know, shows you two ways. One, yes, there are really difficult individuals out there who will try to ignore you, but there are also very supportive ones. And yes, I mean, there have been all kinds of classic things like, I don't know, you sit on a meeting table and you as a girl will be ignored and, you know, everyone will get a glass of water and you don't. And yes, this also happens, but then the response is just, well, you just take the water and just get it yourself and that's it, you know. It's just the best way of showing someone that they're really acting uh, inappropriately. And for every difficult <coughs> um, experience, I could also tell you a really supportive one. So I wouldn't want to say that, um, and by the way, also for the difficult experiences, I had the same that, you know, women were just as nasty as men. So I don't think... We should be too hard on guys here in any case. 
Um, so it's, it's, it, I think this kind of gender problem is more than, uh, th than some people like to portray sometimes. So there are also very supportive um, voices that I had through the years. And there were many, many men actually who also said like, you know, um, there aren't many girls like you. There aren't many girls who will actually be ambitious, who will actually go out there, who will just try, who will show that they're there. And there were many of those who said like, you know, there should be really more of you. So there are the supporters, you know, it's not all that black and white. And I think when it comes to skills, when you really think about uh, what it comes down to, to be successful or to survive in such a fierce tech world. And it's not just, I think, about, uh, again, saying the whole, you know, gender kind of issue. It's about the general kind of thing that the tech world is just very competitive because there are just many people doing it and it's just the one thing these days. But then first of all, you know, allow yourself to be ambitious, allow yourself to have high goals uh, and go for it. Yes, you might fail sometimes, but that's not the point. So try and be ambitious, be brave, yes. Don't be afraid to walk into a room, you know, as a woman especially, if there was just a number of guys, who cares? They're just as unsure as you are. Um, not everyone is born super confident. So be curious. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, there is no question that is just stupid. It's just stupid not to ask them. So um, I know that we always have it somehow in ourselves that it is difficult to appreciate that we don't know something. And God, when I was doing my PhD in Oxford, yes, I felt the same. The first year I found it really, really difficult to ask anyone a question because I felt like, oh, you go, I'm, I'm, I'm su at such a brilliant place. Everyone will be a genius. Everyone will know everything, but sod it, forgo forget it. It's really just ask your questions. It's the only way to actually go forward. Be confident. Or if you're not confident, then try to make yourself look confident. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it is possible. Um, you can actually, you know, train yourself to just stand up and say like, well, okay, I, I can talk about myself, I can present, I'm great. And everyone will believe it, even though actually in your heart you feel like, oh my God, you know, I'm actually really, I have no, no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> so be patient because yes, there will be days when it will get really hard and we heard it there, a brilliant story to that really. <laughs> be patient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> it is something I, I relate very much to. Um, don't be too hard on yourself. And if things fail, just be resilient. Just, just bounce back. You know, I know it sounds very easy, but it's really take, yeah, take you know, chocolate, have a cookie dough ice cream, but just bounce back. You know, you you can do it. And think about plants. You know, they also just don't surrender. <laughs> they don't just you know sit down and say like, ah, oh, well, you know, I'm just gonna die now. No, they just battle through really really battle through so be, be resilient and again failure is really good I know it sounds hard and I know it is just something that you might choose to focus on too much but I think it's really important that you just <laughs> take it as an opportunity to change to challenge yourself and to actually emerge out of a failure much stronger than you have been before as I said, I could, I t could tell you no weeks and months of stories to that one from my personal experience. And I've also met some really great inspirational women in STEM um, who all have in common that they had a goal and ambitious and, uh, and they wanted to change the world in some way or the other. Again, their paths have sometimes not been very lin linear. So for example, I think Reham is a very good uh, example there, where she actually started off being a neuroscientist, and now she's having her own really successful tech startup in HR. And uh, same applies to all the others, you know, that often it's not been very linear, and often there have been cha challenges, personal challenges, professional challenges, things to come about. But all of them had this one goal and said, like, okay, whatever it takes, I'm going to get through there. And as much as I love to talk about, you know, really inspiring people out there, I would also like to highlight some significant supporters I had along my way. 
And if you look at this slide, it's actually 88% male. It's 12% female, and this just matches quite nicely the whole um, gender percentage that we've got. And I think this again shows that men are really great and they are there and they are supportive. Yes, okay, there are those black sheep, but you will find them everywhere. But I think that it is really a problem that we need to tackle, not just in the tech world as such, but it's something that already starts much, much earlier, already in education, already, you know, and not just education, I mean higher education, I mean education being when you've been born, you know, as a girl that you say like, oh no, I can stand up for myself, I can be ambitious, I can be confident, yes, I don't have to be timid, um, I can speak up for myself, because as I said, these are all guys, these have been line managers, bosses, tutors, mentors, startup people, all of them, you know, really helping. So for my take home message from this talk, I would like to tell you that um, to work in this kind of tech area, in the STEM area, it's really all about attitude. It's all about your own attitude more than anyone else's to just, you know, battle through and get through it. So Coming back to the title, think about that you are this kind of platform technology and that you have your unique skills and maybe you haven't quite figured out yet what your killer application is <laughs> and where you, you know, where you will become the next great innovation. But that's fine, you don't have to know now. You can figure it out as you go along as long as you keep on innovating and try to make use of what you've got. So I would like to thank you with that for your attention and if there are any questions I'm happy to take them or just if you want to ask them more privately please just get in touch. Thank you.